All right, so today is a review, but it's gonna be kind of vlog style. I'm gonna be doing a bunch of different setups, testing the lights, testing output, different modifiers, different ways of bouncing the light. Uh, check out that fan that everyone's talking about. How loud is the fixture? Uh, so come along this journey with me. I hope you enjoy this style of review because it's honestly fun for me. And at, by the end of this video, you'll see, I genuinely feel like I learned stuff from this. So pretty excited. All right, guys, enjoy. Let's go. Ooh. Just a little disclaimer, Jean sent me this light, I get to keep it, and in exchange, I'm making this review. We need some light here. I have the camera currently set to ISO 12,800, f1.4, two stops of ND, uh, one over four for the FX6. Let's bring the light in and see what we can do. So we got the B500 right here. Love how there's no ballast. I've already reviewed the B200, which comes out with me every shoot. I was interested in the higher output of the B500. So let's give this a crack. Let's friggin' go. Woo! So let's talk about what's in the bag. You have the B500, the protective cap, power cables, and a reflector dish. Instead of doing like more of just like a classical sort of this is what I like, this is what I don't like. I kind of wanted to take this video. Let's actually test this thing out and see what you could do with this light. Uh, you know what, let's get a practical going and maybe I'll change the color tone. There we go. Yeah, super motivated, right? Plus of this light is that it's bicolor. Basically a lot of the things that I said about the B200 exist with this light. It's the same sort of thing. You have, you know, full bicolor, color temperatures, 2700 to 6500, 500 watts of power, is no ballast, which honestly is one of my favorite things about the B series of lights. <laughs> a lot of this might sound the same, but less is more with this stuff. I mean, everyone that I show this are just blown away that it's like, oh, one, one little plug right here, and that's it. I love how small these fixtures are. I love how bright these fixtures are. I love how it's bicolor. And you know, you also have the ZY Vega app, which is super great. Honestly, for me, where I'm at in my career, I cannot use lights that don't have apps. It's really just honestly something I need at this point. It helps me with a professional workflow. I love the uh, the design. It's very sleek looking. So one of the benefits of using a brighter fixture, it gives you more options in terms of bouncing light, diffusing light. Just having more output gives you a little bit more flexibility. Uh, with the 200 watt light, which is basically just a smaller version of that, but just, uh, you know, much less output. So right now, all I'm doing is reflector dish onto the wall and it's just bouncing right on the ceiling. I don't even have a modifier on I'll here. I'll show you again kind of what I got set up here. I'll take a photo. So that's just out of frame right there. I used this fixture the other day on a shoot and I was using it as a secondary source to bounce off the ceiling with the reflector dish. I did that to help bring up the ambient exposure. So I've been using the Zhiyun lights in addition to my Nan light kit. I've been using them in those purposes. Uh, not to say you can't use them as key lights and for other things. Now, if you're not doing a bunch of interview work, if you're doing a lot of music video, if you're doing narrative work, if you're planning on putting this light, let's say outside and trying to like beam through and get some cool stuff, maybe the fan doesn't really bother you and maybe it's not that loud. I'll have to listen to this test, but ask yourself, what are you doing? What are your needs? And then also just consider, of course, when you're going to buy a cheaper product, there is going to be, you know, some sort of drawback. Like for example, my Nanlite 720B, it's an almost $2,000 light. It's freaking amazing. I love it, but you get most of what I'm getting with that for basically a quarter of the price. That's pretty dope. So you got to ask yourself, what do you need? What is your budget? And again, I, you know, some cons we could talk about. It's a plastic build. That's not great. We'll see how it goes from the long run. I've already had this 200 for a little bit. It's already got a little dinged up over there, probably due to poor care. That's probably my fault. Also, so the 500 has the same sort of, you know, plasticky clamp sort of thing. I wouldn't put any really big modifiers on this. It'll probably... Nope. So keep that in mind. It's a budget light, but it doesn't come with any sort of case with it. You kind of got to make shift your own thing. You know, you've got this. This is what it comes in. I'm not bringing this to set. It's a, it's a piece of cardboard. Maybe I'll grab the inserts, kind of rigging stuff up with milk crates. So there's three built-in fans that help keeps the unit cool. It's also probably, you know, there's no ballast, so all the power is also going on there. Uh, with my B200, I've experienced no fan noise, but with my B500, there is a little bit of noise. Whoa! This is at 58%. 
right over here. This can go 100% with the reflector dish. I mean, that is crazy. This is bounced right now right off my wall. And then so for sound, we have a shotgun mic, I have a lavalier, and I have a on-camera mic. So I wanna see how loud the fan gets. This is currently at 100%. Yeah, that fan is pumping now. You know, I wanted to have the shotgun mic set up because a lot of the work that I do is talking head interviews. And when I got this light, one of the questions is, can this be a key light? So that's 100%, 4,900, off, on. It's pretty noticeable. So I will say to my ears, I could definitely hear this right now. It is loud. So first let's test the boom mic. Can you hear this? Now the lavalier. And now the on-camera mic, which you probably wouldn't use, but let's just say for argument's sake, I was right here doing a little thing. Definitely feels louder than some of my other fixtures I have. Uh, the 200 watt from Jiyun is really quiet, no issues with that. My Nanlite 720B, which is my brightest fixture, but now this probably comes pretty close. I'd have to test it side by side. The 720B is pretty quiet. But my Nanlite 300B Mark One definitely has a little bit of noise. I'm still holding on to that because I do have the Nanlite projector mount and it works with that. Maybe I'll test it out and see with this. Ah! Yeah, that's way too bright. So let's get some diffusion going. This is 23%. Don't worry, we'll, we'll move this. All right, so this is definitely pretty sourcey uh, for sure. But hang on. And I did this really quick, so don't, this is not like supposed to be a big lighting test, but I have two layers of diffusion on the light dome. Camera's right here. All right, so now we're at 23%. I'm gonna crank the ND up so the image gets darker. Uh, so now we're at 50%. Let's let it wait a little bit. I'm gonna go up to 70%. I'm gonna drop the ND. This is like one over 32. Again, key light is like right out of frame. A little underexposed, I could drop the ND. One over 23. I could barely hear the fan out of frame. But it doesn't seem noticeable. I More so I could hear New York City existing outside but it doesn't seem noticeable. I More so I could hear New York City existing outside. All right, for the sake of the test, let's go to 100. And so now in comparison to before, the light is a little further away. There's three layers of diffusion. The noise is back, so let's do another test. Overhead shotgun mic. Lavalier. On camera mic. So I'm gonna bring it back down to 53. I'm gonna take one of these diffusion layers off, drop some of the ND. I mean, damn, that is still bright. This is 43%, two layers of diffusion on the light dome. I'm at F1.4, ISO 800, or ND is at one over 19. The fan is definitely bumping now. You know, we've been using it a little bit. I could, I could hear it. Can you hear it? I don't know. I mean, it could be one of those things though. It's like once you start talking, you can't really hear it, but maybe when it goes silent, it just stopped. So I think at the higher intensities, you are gonna be able to hear it. And I know I've been, you know, I'm just obsessing over this fan, but I think that's the biggest con of this. But you have to ask yourself, what are you shooting? You know, what are you doing? Are you, if you're doing a lot of talking head interviews, would I use this as a key? Probably not. At, at least if for scenarios that you know you're gonna want that full output, if you're only gonna use half the output, maybe up to like 50 or 60, you're probably fine. But yeah, just take note of that. Um, so next, I'm thinking, let's try another scenario where you might want to try a brighter fixture. I want to blast this light from outside and try to get some cool shots. All right. If you're going to use this as a key light, definitely try to have a boom mic overhead, a very directional shotgun mic. This way, you're going to pick up the fan a lot less than, let's say, a lav or an on-camera mic. It's a silhouette, but... This thing is so light, we're gonna put it on my lightweight, crappy old stands. I just need to get a, let's get a stinger. So the goal is to keep exposure outside and then get me lit up and try a couple things, see what we can do. Don't want bugs getting in here. Oh yeah, there she is. And we're at 34%. I'm gonna put it to 56. Now let's raise it. 
<sighs> you know, a gaffer would be helpful here. I gotta get a sandbag out of here. This is sketch. I'm gonna turn that off. All right, to process. No one said it was gonna be easy. Yeah. I should have a C stand, but it's in my car. This feels so much safer. Okay, that's at full blast. Okay, too much ND, too little. I feel like we should get some light in here, right guys? All right, well, it's not connecting, but you can kind of see right there, getting a little bit of an edge. See all that extra information we're getting. Uh, I'm gonna go put the reflector dish on now to see, It'll be much brighter. You can even see it much farther of a spread. Let's try it right out of frame now. And we got hot, sunny day outside. Getting a hot spot, but let's see what this does now. So that's what that's doing. That's way too hot. And that's the beauty of using brighter fixtures is you have more flexibility. I'm not crazy about it. Let's go back to that fake low sunlight thing. Off, on, off. Uh, probably like 30 feet away from me. Not super far, but not super close. Now that I'm inside, the app is definitely tripping up a little bit, but I'm definitely getting like a nice glow back here. I'm giving it a warm glow. Hang on, it's hard to do this. You know, maybe I'll just bring the camera closer. It's off, now it's on. Obviously this isn't really the greatest shot. I just had a long day. So I'd love to raise that up, but I love this like in and out flare and I dropped the color temp all the way down at 2,900. So it's kind of given that like morning glow kind of light. I'm kind of limited with space here, guys. It's a New York City apartment. Uh, like you saw, I could barely get into my backyard, but I'll show you right now. This looks like morning light. Wow, that looks cool. Yeah, this is cool, guys. I feel like I need to do something dope. How do I read? Gandalf, pass the pipe. Give me the ring. Damn, you know how old that is because my name is on here? That means I must have brought it to camp as a kid. Uh, I'm trying to think, what else should we try? So, and another thing just to kind of keep in mind, it's really bright outside, so even, now you gotta think about even with such a bright fixture, uh, depending on what you're trying to do, you could probably use a little more pop, but this is, look, you're getting a really nice edge right here, a nice glow, and I know this is not the best setup. There's things I could do to make this look better. That's not the point of today. It would probably be, when it's darker, the difference would be a lot more dramatic. All right, guys, so that's about it for today. I know today was a little bit different. I had a really good time practicing and testing these different setups, and I really think this is what it's all about, just testing your stuff when you have time off. I literally think I learned stuff during this test. You could see, you know, when I first put the light outside to what I ended up with at the end, you could literally watch my progression, and that was pretty cool to watch. I'm digging on this B series of lights. The fan is a little bit of a worry for me, but maybe it's not for you. If you don't need that much output, go for one of the smaller fixtures. It's pretty amazing how many different features we're getting with these LED lights with at you know such an affordable cost. It's kind of insane. Super excited to see what the future is. I do wonder if my uh, friends at June are cooking up an RGB light. That's just me speculating. They haven't told me anything, but uh, you know, I would love a Cobb LED light with some RGB. B, Jiyun, you know where to find me. Uh, alrighty, guys, uh, appreciate you guys watching and stick out for the next vlog.